Welcome to this episode of the Growth Cast. It is me, Jackson Campbell, joined again with my good friend and co-host Dallas Pruitt here on this beautiful, beautiful morning. Dallas, how are you? Dude, I'm doing good. And this is like deja vu once again. We are twinning and winning. This is very, very, very weird and very unplanned. But every time we pop up, I'm like, oh my hell, he's this wearing gold the- and black just like me. This is this is this is the third week in a row. This is, I was say, is this a joke? <laughs> it's like three weeks in a row. So, so yeah, apparently funny. we're doing great. You know? No, like, we are. We're doing good. We're crushing. No, but we are grateful for all of you that have tuned in today. Um, for the new listeners, thank you for being here on the Growth Cast. We're super excited to have you here for this first episode. Um, this th- this week we're going to do a part two off of our episode from last week, which is the hard doing hard things that are good for the soul. Um, before we dive into this episode again, thank you all for being here. For the new listeners, welcome. Uh, we do ask that you leave us a rating and review after this episode if you enjoyed the if you enjoyed the episode, and then. One other thing that we ask is that you share it. You share the episode. You share the growth cast with those that you think could benefit from it. But let's dive in here. Let's dive in here for our episode today, dude. Again, we're going to talk about things that are hard, but that are good for the soul. Oftentimes, we talk about doing hard things that are good for the soul. So last week, we went over three. This week, we're going to go over three new ones for part two. But Dallas, before we do that, it was just Thanksgiving. We just had Thanksgiving this this past week. And it is, it's, a gr- it's, it's obviously a great time to be where your feet are, right? We always like to, we always like to check each other when it comes to holidays, when it comes to birthdays, when it comes to anniversaries, Dallas and I always like to hold each other accountable to make sure we're where our feet are, because we know, we know we, we know the type of individuals, individuals that we are. We like to work. We like to get things done and we like to, we like to have that momentum continue to flow, right? To continue to go. But it's so important that you do take that time to be where your feet are, to be with your family. If this is dropping on Saturday and you're still on your family vacation um, for Thanksgiving, just remember to be where your feet are. Take those time. Take that time to be with those loved ones. You don't always you don't always get the opportunities to be around all your family like like you do around these holidays. So definitely take advantage of that time and soak it up and be where your feet are. I don't know if you have anything you want to add to that. Beautifully, I think just you said it great. And uh, it is. Um, a pitfall of ours that I'm sure many people can relate with. It doesn't come from a bad place. It comes from a no. place of, again, just wanting to continue to build momentum and grow and, and, you know, do good work and create an impact. And um, I think oftentimes the biggest victim of that pitfall is like those closest to you and your real priorities, you know, um, yeah. they almost get mixed up in, in that, in that folk, in that focus. And so um, it's just a good, it's just a good reminder And, uh, I would just reiterate what you said. So look around you, turn the phone off, um, you know, block out some time, have the quality quality time. You know, a couple episodes, Dallas and I talked about that. We had a, we had a listener send in a, send in a question talking about how they were having a hard time balancing when they're being with, when they're with, when they're with their family, wanting to be working on their, on their multifamily business. But, you know, we talked about on that episode as well. I think it was three episodes ago, if y'all want to go back and re-listen to it. But that time that you spend with your family is actually re-energizing you and rejuvenating you to be able to get back to your work and do it and do it even do it even better and do even more of it. So take that time, be where your feet are and and dive into your family and pour into your family and, and where you're at. But Dallas, let's dive in here. Let's dive in here. Things that are hard and good, but good for the soul. Go yeah. ahead, man. We've got we've got three of yeah. them this week. I'll flip it over to you. Just to reiterate from last week or review, if you will. Um, yeah. You know, it's this idea that uh, it's not even an idea. It's reality that a lot of the time in society, um, whether it's through a podcast, um, you know, social media, whatever, there's lots of voices telling us like all these amazing hard things we can do that are that make us better, right? And mo- a lot of them, majority of them, always revolve around like like something physical. Um, you know, cold, we, we used cold plunge as an example. Yeah. I, I even saw something yesterday, my wife and I were laughing cause I was like, oh man, another person doing the cold plunge, you know? And it's like, it's good. It's not, I'm not speaking of it in a negative way. It is good. It's popular. It's very popular. Right. Um, right now that's one example of a popular physical thing you can do that does make you better and has great health and just 
overall benefits across the board for you. That's hard to do, right? It's one of those things that's hard to do. It's hard to do. Um, But these are those things today that that we're going to talk about are those things that not everybody talks about prevalently. Um, They don't they don't bring attention to it as, as often as a cold plunge, but they're just as hard, arguably sometimes harder than those physical pieces. Right. And so, um, we just want to bring attention and, and focus to these things and, you know, don't, don't underestimate the power of these three things that we're going to talk about today, uh, and the impact that they will have on your business as a business owner, that they will have on your life as, as a father, as, as, uh, a mother, a, a contributing brother, member a sister, of your community yeah, who yeah. wants to create, you know, an impact in your community. Like as a leader, period, these are things leaders do. These are things that people, anywhere they go, they leave a trail of impact. The, these are things that those people do. Um, and so we just want to bring a lot of attention to them today and give you some actionables. And we'll start off by uh, hitting hitting this one. And that is including those who aren't included. Um, you know, I think back, I think back to my career, um, in education and I had the privilege and wonderful blessing of serving, um, the community, uh, where I worked in this school district as the mental health specialist, um, meaning all my students, literally every single one of them were the students nobody really noticed in the school didn't know their names or maybe even maybe even scary to talk to for whatever reason right people's perception um i think was a little off base and sometimes the behaviors were scary sometimes those behaviors were yeah. off putting and scary um but so it gave me a a prime opportunity to really dive dive deep into myself and figure some things out on how i could work within the context of all three of these things that we're going to talk about today, but specifically talking to this first one, right. Including those who were, were excluded, who were not included in the assemblies, who were not included in, um, the award ceremonies, who were not included in the passerby conversations and relationships in the hallways, you know, and to see the, the negative impact that that had, on them by not being included and to see the difference, uh, in their demeanor, to see the difference in their, uh, just overall experience. Once we designed some things that allowed them to become more included in all of those things. And not only that, but to see, and again, speaking specifically to what we're talking about today, to see what happened with the individuals who were contributing to including them in these things. That's specifically what I'm, I really want to hone in on today is that, created a mutual impact on both ends. But I would argue that the greater impact actually happened from the giver or the the includer, the person who came into that scenario yeah. and dug deep into their freaking soul to do the right thing, even though it was extremely difficult. Having an awkward conversation where nobody's returning anything, um, you know, dealing with some weird behaviors that you've never really dealt with on a regular basis not dealing, you know, non-bubbly personalities, pretty closed off, cold personalities, scared individuals. But once they started to warm up and to see the change, that person who was including that other person and to see that change, to see that skyrocket, their character, their belief in others, their energy across the board and all the things that they were doing, man, it was palpable. It was, it was dramatic. That's what kept me in it. That's what kept me in it, dude. That was one of those most important things that kept me in that line of work was to see the impact that that had on the includer, not just those students I was serving who had been excluded. Um, it's extremely impactful. And I think again, um, it's not something because we're so focused because we're so focused on our work, because we're so focused on getting things done, um, you know, achieving a result that we've specified as a team that we need to get to. I just think these things can get overlooked. And again, absolutely. If want, anyways, if you want more energy, man, like pay more attention to those people. Absolutely, dude. I couldn't agree with you more. And I think it's one of those things that like, obviously I, the majority of people know this, right? The majority of people know, Hey, I should go out of my way and, and 
and include everybody. Make sure everybody's feeling included in whatever I'm when whatever I'm doing. Um, it's a lot easier to know those that you need to do that than to actually go forward and do those things and find somebody that's not included and include them with what's going on. So Dallas, I guess I guess I have a question. Yeah. How can how can we look for these opportunities? Right. Look for the, how can we look for these opportunities to include somebody that's not being included? Yeah. Uh, there where is should a... we where should where should we look for those opportunities? You know, because yeah. like I want to be I want to be able to do this. I want to include people that aren't included, but I want to make sure. And I think our listeners too want to make sure that they're. Yeah. You know what I mean? How can I do don't that? know if I'm going to get these words perfectly correct, but I want to share them. I'll give a variation of them if it's not perfectly correct, because I think it's a uh, a reminder that you can run through your mind every single day. And, and, and again, words are powerful. They bring focus to something. And so um, there's this group, there's this group here locally. Um, shout out to E4A, uh, especially for athletes. And it's something that I, I saw at the high school level when I was there that is extremely applicable in business. It's extremely applicable anywhere you go um, in any industry. And it's eyes up, do the work. And so I think, you know, for us, how? Well, one way you for sure won't be able to do it is if your head and your face are buried into some piece of technology, primarily this piece of technology. Um, there was an example that was shared to or shared with me. I heard a story one time. Um, it was just an example. And it was talking about the way we check out of um, like even a grocery store, right? Like it's a mundane thing. They're scanning items. Doop. Doop. The, the cashier is typically not looking at you. They're focused on the work. Um, there's a bagger bagging uh, food, right, yeah. that you've just purchased. There's somebody behind you in line. Maybe it's a – who knows? Half the time you don't even know who the hell that person is because you're not paying attention because what's the best way to spend your time waiting that out? Pull your phone out. Put your face in your phone. Get yeah. some work done. Yeah. Sometimes it's worse. You're not even getting work done. <laughs> you're just scrolling. And it's literally being more – intentional in those types of moments. That's where you'll really start to figure it out is when you're more intentional in those types of moments. And so an actionable would be next time you're checking out of the grocery store, a great way to practice this is put your phone in your pocket, look at the cashier, pay attention to their demeanor, look at the bagger, pay attention to his or her demeanor, right? I mean, I don't know about you and your local grocer, but like mine, there's typically a lot of people, baggers particularly, I know a few because they were my friends in school growing up who, guess what? They were the ones that were excluded, right? Because of a difference, because of something different about them, right? Yeah. And it's a great opportunity to have a conversation. It's a great opportunity to practice a new behavior for you. It's a great opportunity to notice more. It's a great opportunity to pay attention. Um, so eyes up. I love and that. then following up, do the work. And if you have your eyes up and you're looking into people's faces and you're paying attention, you'll be able to, to see those fine details that show you, hey, this person's in a bad space. Hey, this person's struggling. Hey, this person isn't doing great. Or hey, this person seems very standoffish. Yeah. Kindness. Let, yeah. let Ask a question. See how they're doing. Genuinely show interest. And when you do this, again, that will fill your tank up. And as you practice it in moments like that, when you get to the office, you habitually will start to do that more, but it doesn't just start in the office because that's probably going to be the most, that's probably going to be the most uh, difficult space to Place do it to because do it. you're so habitual and so focused on what yeah. you've always done because it pushes the needle and it gets results. But if you can start doing this in the day to day, when you check out of the grocer, when you um, go into the gas station, and fill up in the morning. When you check in, scan your cute, you know, whatever code to get into the gym in the morning. Those are places where you can practice this behavior. And again, those words are eyes up, do the work, and just bring those to the forefront whenever you get into a situation that involves people that you don't particularly or always like hone in on their face. You don't, yeah. you don't, you know. So I think that's a great, I think that's a great way to go about it. Thank you for giving that example. I think that I think that helps understand the principle even even in greater depth too, right? It's not always including them. Like you're going into the gym, you see the guy checking in. It's not like you're gonna put your arm around him and say, "Come work out with me." We're gonna be buddy old pals. But it's just including them in your life, including them in the day to day, including including people in those things. And like like you said, have your eyes up, look for those opportunities where you can make somebody smile. 
and include them, include them in that happiness, include them in that joy that you feel. Right. I love that. So thank you. What's for crazy. That what's crazy too, though, is like when you do that, I remember being out in Hawaii um, and powerhouse gym. So you're, yeah. you're, you, you guys go there every morning and there's a gas station. I don't know the name of the gas station right on the corner. Nom um, nom. Yeah. So you're coming in, there's the nom nom gas station. And there was yep. this little Japanese lady um, working the, the cashier, the register. And I pulled in and I remember going in and grabbing my morning drink or whatever it was um, or filled up with gas. I can't remember what I was doing, but she made my freaking day. She was so happy and so bubbly and said some words in Hawaiian or Japanese or whatever it was that I didn't even understand, but I knew it was very loving and it put a huge smile on my face and filled my cup up. She was including me in her life and I allowed her to have an impact on me because I literally just paid attention. I looked at her. I had an actual short, impactful conversation and that made my entire day. I don't want anybody to underestimate the power of those types of connections, those types of touch points. They're very important. And they do, they do fill you up. So you're wondering why, why am I empty? Why am I so empty? Well, you're empty because your eyes aren't up. You're not doing the work. You're only doing certain parts of the work. Do all the work. It's all important. So I don't know. That was a great example. I no, just thought I of because I was it. at the old Nom Nom gas station in Hawaii. And <laughs> it's crazy it. that like some detail like that had such an impact on my trip because we did so many damn fun things. My wife but and you remember I that. went over remember to- that. The other side of the island, we got to go to Road to Hana, you know, Uh all these things. But like that one moment in the Nom Nom gas station with the little Japanese lady literally impacted my trip and my life in ways that I will forever be grateful. So that's awesome. So there's there's power. There's power in this actionable. There's definitely power on like Dallas is saying on the giver side and on the receiver side. So definitely. Definitely take, definitely Absolutely. take, definitely take advantage of that. The second thing that you have that you have written down here, Dallas, for us to talk about again, hard things to do, but that are good for the soul is show genuine interest in those who are hard to talk to. Yeah. So this one kind of goes hand in hand with that first one, right? But go ahead. Okay. So um, I don't want to get too personal with this. Uh, so I'll refrain from referencing certain individuals because there's some that are very close to me that I'm, I, I'm sure would fall under this category. And maybe yeah. I fall under this category for somebody. I'm not going to like slight myself by any means sure. um, of, of, you know, uh, but let's use the name Jim, Jimmy. Okay. There was a, there was a student that I had again, coming back to my days in education. Um, we'll call him Jimmy for, for confidentiality. And Jimmy was honestly a dick. He was just a complete jerk, miserable. He'd walk through the door. Hey, what's going on, Jimmy? <sighs> Wouldn't even say a word, just freaking mumble something and go slam his head on the desk. Right. Wasn't cleanly, um, wore the same clothes every day, completely miserable, hated his life, hated life, hated people. Um, and he was so freaking hard to have a relationship with and even like start a relationship with, but I made it my goal. I was like, you know what? I'm going to freaking, I'm going to break down this wall somehow, some way we're going to break down this wall. And, uh, I found out he had a couple really like firm, solid, like hyper-focused interests, Mountain Dew and cats. And this kid freaking loved Mountain Dew and he loved cats. And so that was a barrier of entry for me, right? I was like, okay, sweet. We're going to bring it back to Mountain Dew at some level, and we're going to talk about cats. Note about me, I freaking hate cats. I think cats are, if they were bigger, they'd eat us. I hate cats. I freaking hate cats. Okay? But it was common. I found common sure. commonality. I found yeah. something. And the cool thing about Jimmy is with time to save ourselves some details, by showing genuine interest in him as a person and working hard to have conversation and find common ground. This kid, my love for him, one, grew immensely. And his love for me grew immensely to the point that this was a guy who hated touch, physical touch. Don't touch me. Don't even like get close to my bubble kind of person, right? It got to the point where we would go walk around the track for PE because he was so uh, defiant on doing any type of physical activity, unless it was walking around the track. So that was our exercise. And he would lean his arm on my shoulder and then put his arm around my shoulder and walk, basically hugging me around the track every single day. And majority of our conversations revolved around Minecraft cats, 
Mountain Dew, you know, whatever. But that, that human being, that human being honestly changed my life forever because he taught me a really important lesson. He taught me a lot of really important lessons. But one of those lessons is we as human beings all just want the same thing. We just mm-hmm. want to be loved. We just want, we want relationship. We, we want to be happy. And David, or about <laughs> slip, Jimmy, this kid, he just wanted to be loved. He just wanted a friend. He just wanted to be happy. And he was very, 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 very hard to do this with. And he was very, very different than me. But that hard work literally set me up for success in all other relationships that have come post that relationship with him. Wow. It gave me a foundation. And literally, I attest my I I attribute my skill set in building relationships and working with people and and in business to Jimmy's to and there's a billion other names, and they were all 15 to 18 year old excluded students who just wanted some love, who wanted to feel happy, who wanted to be successful. And just by spending time with these people and listening and working hard to find common ground, to learn about them, and that allowed me to learn about myself and increase my skill set and some strengths that some of them I had a a slight recognition and some of them I didn't even know I had. And so I'm just forever grateful for those human beings. And uh, we can't underestimate the power of, of that type of hard work. No, you really can't. This is one of those things that I genuinely love to do. I love to have conversations with people that don't necessarily want to have conversations or that are hard to talk to, right? Or that are, I want to put hard to talk to in parentheses, right? Yeah. I don't think anybody's necessarily hard to talk to. I just think everybody has a little bit of different way of communicating, right? And figuring out that way to communicate with somebody and then communicating with them. That's, that's the, te- that's the challenging task, right? Um, Absolutely. But doing this, <clears throat> doing this not only benefits the individual that you're talking with, but a lot of the times you learn so much about yourself when talking with new people and having those hard conversations. And I even want to say like hard to talk to, it's just because they're different than you. Maybe you're the one that's hard to talk to for them. You know what I mean? So it's also keeping keeping that perspective in check too of we're all just different. We all have different ways to communicate one with another. But once you can figure out new ways to communicate with new different types of people that communicate differently than you, not only does their love grow for you, but your love grows for them and your love just for people all together grows. Um, I believe that this world is full of amazing and incredible people. And that, like I said, we all have different ways to communicate one with another and, yeah. and genuinely putting in that effort to figure out how to communicate um, in a impactful way with individuals is, is really that hard task. That's good for the soul. Yeah. Right. And you think about how timely that is, because like you said, this day and age, right in the current world and so state hard. that we live in, Differences aren't embraced. Differences are mm-hmm. ridiculed. Differences yeah. are are judged and harshly, and it's it's not good. It is not good. Um, you know, Seven Habits of Highly Effective People. Uh, Stephen Covey um, celebrate the differences of others. I remember that being like very prominent in my mindset when I started working in in that field. Um, and so just to kind of like drive this home and actionable, right. Maybe this will spurn an idea for somebody. Maybe, maybe you're racking your brain right now. You're like, man, I could, I could do a better job here. Well, sweet. Let's weaponize you with some more stuff because I could do a better job too. I, this is like a progression for all of us. And we have to continue to gut check ourselves so that we can get back in check with things that work and do create an impact and do help us grow. I remember um, they had never been included, right? This kind of like revolves around all, all three of these things. They'd never been included in like any of the like Christmas, Thanksgiving, you know, types of norms and celebratory things that the students would do at the high school. Um, and so I brought it, I brought it to our classroom. So I remember I, I did, but I didn't like, again, me being me, I guess it's like, I didn't want to just do it at a small scale. It was like, you know, I'm going to freaking call the director of special education 
I'm going to call all the admins. I'm going to call all these people, the big wiggies, and I'm going to bring them to our classroom. And my students, because I wanted to gift my students this gift, they were going to include them, right? And so again, be the givers. And so we brought them in and we hyped this thing up. And all of these students, they made a turkey dinner and freaking mashed potatoes and like all these things. They set the freaking table. They did all these things. And then they, we went through this gratitude thing around the table. And this is like a perfect thing for Thanksgiving. Right. And I remember just tearing up all of us, right? Because you want to know how many of those excluded students were going to experience that when they went home? Maybe two of the 15, maybe they had never experienced that ever. That's normal for me. That was, it was a chore, right? Like sometimes we get caught in that, like this is a chore. I do. That was not normal for them. They'd never experienced that, but to see everybody embracing differences, right. And just being human and kind and loving and genuinely showing interest in one another. Honestly, dude, that day is etched in my memory forever. And I want more of it. And I need to do better as I'm speaking it out loud. I'm like, you know what, what, what am I doing now? Right. We could all do better there. We could all embrace differences. We could all be more open um, to having dialogue and finding common ground and understanding. And you'll find when you do that hard work, you actually can find common ground with almost everyone. Almost. It's so important. And I think it's so important to do those things because not only can you find common ground with them, but it adds to your perspective of life and understanding how people navigate this life. And it just, it benefits you benefits you so much again when communicating with people how to serve people it's just it's it's such an important thing that we do and like you said dude it's one of those harder things that are so 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 good for the soul Absolutely. but let's move on let's move on here to the last, yeah, last one, one. The, the third and final one i really like this one i really yeah. like this one you know that you know that this one is is big for me it hasn't always really been a very important thing for me i've i haven't really always done this uh, it's kind of a newer thing for me but go ahead yeah now. It, What's it's, this third thing? it's near and dear to my heart too, um, for a lot of different reasons. And it's, it's instead of anger, choosing pity, yeah. right? Instead of choosing to be angry towards someone or so, a group of people, um, choose pity. I, I actually received this, um, I received this, it was a couple of days ago. I wanted to read through it. Um, it said, uh, these people are frustrating. I'm going to like insert deeper into what it was and then give context. These people are frustrating. They make the world less safe, less productive, less collaborative. They poison the common good. They destroy any semblance of common understanding or commonality period. But, and, and, and the examples of these people, uh, this person was referencing people who are greedy, people who are ignorant, people who are manipulative, people who are racist, people who are polluters, people who, Um, he even used like reality television stars, like there were like lots of specific references. Right. Um, and, but then he goes on to say that, but instead of getting angry at these people, try pity first, as we've said before, these people aren't actually having a good time, nor in most cases, are they avoiding the consequences of their own actions in stuff? In some cases, a lot of cases, I would argue they suffer most. These people that we're talking about, they suffer most, uh, you and I both know this to be true. And, uh, even if it doesn't always seem so obvious, so, uh, instead of being like them, right. Choose pity, choose that, choose sorrow. And I I love the definition of pity is it's like sorrow and compassion. Yeah. Choose to be, be compassionate towards these individuals. How many of us, I would ask the better question. How many of us listening right now have, uh, have chose to be irritated about a family member? Um, who does something different or has a behavior or says something um, or a business partner who does the same thing. Right. And we've, dear friend, and we've yeah. stirred that up for so long that that anger, the only thing it has done is increased. And what's crazy is when you shift, when you literally just shift the button, turn it off and flip it to out. Oh, wow. I actually, I actually have compassion for that person because that compert that person who's caused that that says more about where they're at than where you're at. It says way more about them, about where they're at. And you are returning the negativity by being angry, by being negative, by, by 
throwing a flaming dart back towards their direction. When the best thing that you could do to create an impact is just choose to have pity. And and I, that sounds negative because I think we've like mixed the word up or like maybe used it out of context sometimes as far as pity or it's it's been portrayed as like a negative thing. Pity, literally the definition of pity is being sorrowful, sorrowful or or having compassion towards someone. And it's a game changer, man. It is a game changer. You want to stagnate your growth. You want to stop yourself from moving forward in life and becoming better Then, you know, sit in those, those feelings of anger for a long this time. Ki- this, this principle came up a few episodes ago. It was actually the one that came that we recorded when you were here in office in Maui. Um, this came up, this principle came up and what I, what I, the, the, uh, the example that I explained was when somebody's getting like, instead of anger, choose compassion, right? There's a lot of things that make everybody mad. There's a lot of things that make you mad. There's just a lot of things that frustrate and irritate people, right? Whether that's family life, relationships with friends, your relationships at work, um, your relationship with work, uh, very easy at times to get frustrated with those things and get frustrated with those, in, those individuals, but like Dallas is saying, and like like I've like I've said, and I will continue to say, in those situations, instead of returning that frustration with frustration or anger or irritation, return that frustration with compassion, love, sorrow, and pity, like you're talking about. Because not only does that better the situation for you, but it also betters the situation for that individual. At that point, you can really look at it from a different lens to help that individual if they need help with something. Right. Or to be able to look inwards and realize that maybe it's not that big of a deal and maybe you should have compassion on that person. I'm not always saying that it's your job to to fix somebody's bad mood that's irritating you. It's not your it's not necessarily your job to do that. But what is your job is to decide how you're going to react to those things that make you irritated. That is your job and that is your responsibility. And that is something you have control over, right? You don't yeah. have to get you don't have to get frustrated. You don't have to get angry with these things that that irritate you. Instead, you can choose sorrow, you can choose compassion in those moments. And sure. that helps that person and it helps you. It helps, it helps both parties because you're protecting your peace, you're protecting mm-hmm. yourself from the influence um or giving somebody else power over over your life. Over Dude, I your, love how I love right. how you said that protecting your peace, dude. That's exactly what it is. You're, you're protecting you're somebody else. You, yeah. That power. Exactly. Totally. You're giving somebody else power over your experience. And that is a, a bad choice. That's not a good choice on your end. Um, but the, really like the solution is twofold. Show compassion, right? And by showing compassion and returning, returning anger for compassion, for love, right? W- what you're doing is you're protecting your peace too, because yeah. now- you can move forward. Nothing's holding you back, right? You haven't given control to somebody else. You haven't given control to an outside, right? Stimulus. Um, you've, you've gained, you've, you've not just regained, but you've sustained control of over your experience. And that's extremely important if you want to grow and become your best and, and have an impact on people for the better, exactly. right? Exactly. Have an impact on the people around you for, for the better. And so, yeah, these three I, things, man, I love. Can it. I give an example? Yeah, can I give an give example it, give of it. this last one? So instead of yeah. anger, choose choose pity or or love or compassion, right? I've had to, actually extremely recently in my life, I've had this, I've had a very, very vivid and real situation where there's been things that have been irritating me and that they've been, they've been actually making me angry with some yeah. relationships in my life. They've been actually making me mad. Um, so instead of choosing, instead of choosing anger, I decided I was going to flip that and I was going to, and I was going to switch that and I was going to choose love. I was going to choose compassion and I was going to choose pity towards this situation. Now choosing, choosing compassion isn't always just giving them a hug and saying, Oh, it's okay. I love you. I know you're making me mad, but I'm just going to wear this and it's going to be okay. When you have true compassion and love for someone, a lot of the times, again, depending on the relationship, instead of choosing anger, choose love. And when you choose love, that's actually choosing to make a choice to make a correction to that individual. Oh, man, that's right? powerful. I've had, you know, there's, there's a lot of times where it's, it, you don't just choose love and choose sorrow and choose compassion to not do anything. You choose compassion because you love that individual. 
you want that to be, you want things to be better for that individual. So powerful. So instead dude. of, so instead of, so instead of not doing anything, even there too, a lot of the times real love is making that correction to that individual. If a correction is needed. It's, right. Oh, so gosh, it's, it's, an, so it's, powerful, an, it's an important dude. thing. I, I used that is almost verbatim. What me and my little dilly dilly talked about this morning. My little dilly dilly has, um, a short fuse. She is very quick to react to dad saying, Hey, don't do that. Um, you know, Hey, be careful. And she's like, Oh, dad, don't talk to me, you know? And, and, and I, I, I've kind of taken this new stance with her because my old, my old ways were like, Hey, don't you talk to your dad that way. Right. And now it's like, Hey, Dylan, I want to show you compassion. I don't want you to talk to me that way. One, because it's not the right thing to do, but like two, that makes you feel like crap. Like I didn't say it to her like that, but like, sweetie, pay attention to the way that makes you feel. I'm not going to allow yourself. I'm not going to allow you to allow yourself to feel like garbage, right? Like that's that same sentiment that you just broke down. And so it's not being a pin cushion for others. It's not being a, a doormat for people to wipe their feet on, right? It's exactly no. what you said because you love them enough to not allow, you don't want to watch another day go past. And again, you need to strategically navigate these conversations, but you don't want another day, if possible, to go past where they are causing themselves more and more grief, more and more pain, more and more frustration. And I'm excited about this new step with my little girl. Like that's a perfect life example of like how I'm learning how to do that literally with a four-year-old. Um, yeah, it's important. She shouldn't be disrespectful to her dad because that's... Hell, it's a commandment, right? Like, right, right, come on, right. sweetie. But I can't be reactive that way and like be short-winded and inexplicable to a four-year-old. Man, what the most the most powerful lesson I could help her learn right now is that, hey, sweetie, pay attention to the way that makes you feel when you throw anger my way. How does that make you feel? Well, it makes me feel like crap. Good. I don't want you to make yourself feel that way anymore. That's why we shouldn't react that way. That's why we should, you know, anyways, it's, awesome. it's a great, it's a great example. Awesome. You, and you put it great example. So. Awesome. Dow, is there anything else you want to add to these things? I think again, just as we review these three things that you can do that are not necessarily easy, but that will benefit you and the individual that you're helping with and that are good for the soul. Um, again, include those who aren't included, show genuine interest in those who are hard to talk to. And instead of anger, choose pity and feel sorrow and compassion and love instead of anger. Dallas, thank you so much for these wise words, man. I think these are incredible actionables from this episode that timely. we can apply apply in our lives and very timely, very timely uh, that we can apply in our lives and, and better our lives and continue to grow, right? So thank you. Thank you so much for your time and your energy and your efforts for these episodes, man. So appreciative. Um, and to those that are listening, thank you so much for tuning in again. Please Remember to rate, review, and share the podcast. We want as many people as possible to listen to these things that we talk about. So have a great rest of your weekend and take care, y'all.